Rotations are a frequent engineering and technological challenge, especially when they need to be done quickly. Examples range from putting spin on a curveball to changing the orientation of a jet aircraft, but we look here at the economically vital field of automated manufacturing. Automated machines must often be designed or configured to reposition objects. If the operation is too slow, costs rise. If too fast, things break. Our task is to design and test a system that will rotate any one of five objects by 180 degrees as quickly as possible without breaking anything. In real automated systems, operations may move at speeds of several thousand rotations per minute, so breakage would be both expensive and dangerous. In our simulation, we use much slower speeds and a friction-based connection, which can break easily and safely, but the basic principles are the same. The rotating platform is a standard CD disc, and our object is always a PVC pipe coupling with a threaded rod, six washers, and four nuts. The independent variable is the position of the washers and nuts. We want to find an algebraic function which will calculate the maximum safe angular acceleration, alpha, for any position of the washers and nuts. With the washers at their maximum distance from the center, the system slipped significantly when the angular acceleration was 7 radians per second squared, and catastrophically at a higher acceleration. For the second configuration, our theory predicts reliable results with accelerations up to 7.94 radians per second squared. The theory also predicts certain failure if the acceleration is 23.5 or above. With the washers close to the outside of the PVC coupling, the theory predicts that we can have accelerations up to 21 radians per second squared and safe results, but that anything above 62 radians per second squared will give us a certain failure. Early in the design of a product or a process, engineers almost always use mathematical models. Sometimes the math is done within a computer program, sometimes with a calculator or with pencil and paper, but either way the engineers have to understand the methods and limitations of the calculations. To rotate the object safely and efficiently, we need to know the object's moment of inertia and how it may change. One key component is a PVC pipe coupling could be modeled in a variety of ways, but we should be able to get reasonably accurate results by considering the coupling to be a thin, hollow cylinder. Since all the mass with thin cylinders at the same distance from the axis, this way of estimating the moment of inertia uses the simple formula I equals mR squared. The second component is a threaded rod. Real rods all have a finite thickness, and this one even has threads, but we should still be quite close to the actual value if we neglect both the thickness and the threads. Deriving the moment of inertia formula for a thin rod is a fairly simple exercise in calculus, but it can also be found in a number of standard tables. The moment of inertia for the rod is 1 12th the mass times the length squared. The final components are the washers and nuts threaded onto the rod. Their moment of inertia could be calculated individually, but we took the simpler approach of assuming that each set of three washers and two nuts is a single solid cylinder. The formula for a solid cylinder rotating about its central diameter is a bit more complex than the other two, taking into account both the length and the radius of the cylinder. Adding the moments of inertia for the components gives us the total moment of inertia for the object, although we're still left with the unrealistic assumption that both sets of washers are located at the axis of rotation. Fortunately, there's a mathematical model to account for moving the washers. The parallel axis theorem tells us that the moment of inertia for each of the sets of washers will increase by its mass times the square of its distance from the axis. In our case, the mass of the washers is going to remain constant, however the distance from the center of rotation will change. Combining the constant terms with the effects of changing the position gives us an equation which should be a good predictor of the changes in moment of inertia. Since the distance from the axis to the washers can vary from about 5 millimeters to about 150 millimeters, we can expect the moment of inertia to change by nearly a factor of 20. Our system depends on friction to hold the object in place, so we need to know just how strong the frictional force might be. 
We also need to include a safety margin. For real systems like this, there are almost certain to be some small vibrations or other disturbances. We want the system to recover from these disturbances, which means we are searching for the coefficient of kinetic friction, the friction that can stop the object even if it begins to slip a bit. Using the maximum value for static friction might work part of the time, but it will not give the reliable results we want. The free body diagram for objects shows the force of gravity pulling down, the normal force from the ramp, and the frictional force parallel to the ramp. The normal and frictional forces are difficult to measure directly, but it's easy to measure the horizontal and vertical dimensions of the incline. Using similar triangles, the ratio of the frictional force to the normal force, which is also known as mu, the coefficient of friction, is equal to the ratio of height to base for the triangle formed by a ramp. The data for a ramp at the maximum safe angle which survived disturbances gives us a ratio of 0.21. We should be able to depend on a force of friction that is about 20% of the normal force, but no more than that. Our surface will be horizontal, so the normal force will be equal in magnitude to the weight of the object. The total mass is 0.1625 kilograms, which gives a weight of 1.59 newtons. If friction can really provide a force up to 21% of the normal force, we should be able to get up to about 0.33 newtons of frictional force. In operation, all this force is delivered at a distance of 26 millimeters from the axis, so we should be able to count on a torque of up to 0 0.0087 newton meters. When money, lives, and reputations are at stake, most engineers and technicians like to stay well away from the breaking point. To be extra safe, we specify a, wor a maximum working torque that is 40% below our theoretical calculation. Now that we know the maximum safe torque, and we have a way of calculating the moment of inertia, we should be able to calculate the maximum angular acceleration for any configuration of our object. Using, the, using Newton's second law as applied to rotation, the maximum acceleration in units of radians per second squared should be the torque divided by the moment of inertia. The hardware used in this activity is built from a high-tech HS7975HB hobby servo motor reconfigured to give it a 180 degree range and a vernier sensor DAC interface which is used to produce the pulses necessary to control the servo motor. The control software is written by Learning with Math Machines using LabVIEW. There are a variety of options available in this software package but here we're using it simply to input the maximum angular acceleration and we've selected to do that in units of radians per second. Uh, it's simply a matter of typing in the desired angular acceleration and pressing run. And it does half the motion with a positive acceleration, the other half with a negative acceleration. Students who've done calculations with paper and pencil or calculators can simply type in the answers they've, they've found and uh, press run to see what happens and very quickly go back and try alternative numbers. They're able to see both the actual motion and the graphic output of the change in the velocity and the acceleration. Most homework assignments in many labs uh, stop with a numeric number and that's essentially how this is working so far, but it's also possible to get the students to abstract their answer a little bit and to turn it into a more uh, uh, algebraic form by selecting either one or two inputs and then entering a free form algebraic function in this case to calculate the best acceleration for any of the possible radii. Once they've had the right formula they simply can enter the desired radius, let their formula calculate the acceleration and press run to see if it works. Moment of inertia is one of many math machine activities which challenge learners to interpret graphs and apply math and science in other ways as they work to achieve immediate physical results. For free software, information about workshops, and more, visit www.mathmachines.net. Learning with Math Machines is a not-for-profit 501c3 charitable organization.